All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, once you access Google Docs from your Gmail account, right? So we know we're logged in here. We can click on the nine dots here for Google Apps and then click Docs, and it will open up a brand new tab. And then once we get here, we just want to create a, bland, a brand new blank document. So I'm just going to click on blank document here, and it's going to open up a new document for us. And here we are. Notice that it looks much like a page, right? like a blank piece of paper uh, that you would write on. And so this is where we're always going to be starting at when you open a brand new blank document. And today we are going to create a recipe for making mac and cheese. And we'll have some fun with it. So the first thing I want to do, um, anytime you see this little cursor, you see that blinking cursor, uh, that is where if I start typing, that is where the words are going to go on the page. So I'm going to go ahead and say mac and cheese recipe. Uh, let's, let's actually fancy this up. Deluxe mac and cheese recipe. Created by Eric. All right. So this doesn't look very exciting at first, right? It's kind of, you know, small, doesn't really come out strong. We want to make this bold um, so that it adds some uh, flavor to it. It kind of stands out because this is the title of our document. So to do that, anytime you want to change text, uh, the first thing you have to do is you actually have to highlight the text that you want to change. And when you highlight the text um, that you are changing, it, gets, it turns blue like this. And then all you have to do is just simply click on what you want to do. So if you want to make it bold, all we have to do, again, once you selected it, and again, to select, all I did was left click, and I hold down my left mouse, and I move all the way to the left, and then release it. When you release it, this is now selected. So to make the text larger, we can increase our font here using this plus sign, or we can make it smaller. So if we make it smaller, you will see it live changed. Notice that our text went to size eight. It's still highlighted. Let's go ahead and make it bigger. And I'm gonna go to a nice big size that's gonna really be bold and stand out. I'm gonna go at 24, okay? Uh, so, and I also want to make it bold, so I'm going to click that, and I also want to make it underlined. Okay, so let me just zoom out just a little bit, go and see a few more options. Okay, so now we have it here, and also I wanted to say created by Eric, and I want that to be a little bit bigger, not as big as the title though. So I'm going to just make that, mm, let's go with like a 15. Also going to make it bold, but now I want this in the middle of the page, right? So I have deluxe mac and cheese, and it's created by Eric. So I want to move this to the middle of the page. Right now, uh, as you can see, this is all on the far left side of the page. So we call that left alignment. So if I select the text again, and then there's a function here called alignment. Alignment is going to tell the text where you want it on the page. As I click this down arrow next to align, we have several options that come. Left align, center align, and right align. We won't worry about justify today. So it's currently in left align mode. If we go here and click on center align, notice that it centers the text in the middle of the page. If I, again, while it's still selected, come here and do right align, notice it moves everything to the right. So depending on where you want your text in the page, you can tell Google Docs, I want it left aligned like this, I want it center aligned like this, or do you want it right aligned? So in this case, I want my text and my title center aligned. I'm also gonna go ahead and select this top line here, and I'm gonna change the color the color of the text is right here, right next to the underline button, which is here. Again, I just selected using my left click to highlight the text that I want to change. 
And then I simply come here to text color, one click, and these are my options. I'm going to go with blue. So now we have a title that's nice and big, is bold, is underlined, we have it centered, and we change the color to blue. Looking good so far. Created by Eric. Let's also add the date that we created it. Uh, May 23rd, 2024. Okay. So then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. Enter is used to go down to the next line. So I just hit enter. If I hit enter one more time, I get a blank line. But I'm still in the middle of the page. So I'm ready to start our recipe. But I don't want to really type in the middle of our page. I really want to type on the far left margin. That's where we're normally going to read from uh, for normal text. And so I'm going to go back up to the top, click on a line, and I'm going to go left a line. OK. This is where I need your guys' help. So now we're going to make our list of things. And at the bottom of our list, we're going to insert a table. And that table is going to give them information based on uh, how many servings of a mac and cheese you're making. So it'll give you like, hey, if you're making one serving, this is how many eggs, this is how much cheese, this is how much milk, um, and this is how long it needs to cook at whatever temperature, right? And so we'll do that at the bottom. But for now, let's go ahead and make our list. So... I'm just going to go over here to the far right and you see where my mouse is and it gives you the option of a numbered list. This is just going to give you like that one, you know, bulleted list one, do this, step two, do that, step three, do this. So I'm going to click that and you're going to see a one pop up on the page. Okay, so we're at step one. So what is step one to make mac and cheese? Macaroni. I would say collect the following items from your pantry. And then I'm going to hit enter to go to the next line. It gives me a two, but I don't want step two yet. I want to give them the items that they need to collect. So I really want one A. Does that make sense, everyone? So to get one A, Notice that I'm on line two and it says two, but if I hit tab on my keyboard, the tab button is just to the left of the Q button on your keyboard. So if you find Q and go to the left of it, it says tab. Watch what happens when I hit tab. It's gonna move it over and it turns that two into one A. So now we're ready to list all of the items that they need to collect. All right, so you guys help me out. What are the items we need to collect? I think someone said, what was it, pasta? Macaroni, yeah, pasta. Macaroni, macaroni shells. What else do they need to collect? Cheese. Cheese? Any type of specific cheese we like? Cheddar? Bontina, Parmesan. Parmesan? Mm -hmm, Parmesan. I don't know if I spelled that right. Forgive me if I didn't. Oh, no, see, look I, at that. Google, Google Docs is going to help me. See that little red okay. underline? It's the helping me. Is wrong. Mm -hmm. So when I right click, it's spell checking, it's going to help me. So let's go with that. All right, so we got our cheese. Any other types of cheese? Anybody use multiple different types of cheeses? Yeah. Cheddar, sharp cheddar. Okay, we got some cheddar. I thought somebody might say that. <laughs> Cheddar cheese. That's the southern part. Yeah. All right, what else? Butter. Butter. Mm -hmm. All right. Butter. Notice every time I want to add a new bullet point, I just hit enter. So it's important that your cursor be all the way at the end. And then I just hit enter, and it goes to the next line and gives me that next bullet point. So we're on bullet point 1E. But well, we got macaroni shells, Parmesan cheese, cheddar cheese, butter. We need milk. Milk, yeah. Uh, we need a um, a casserole dish. Mm -hmm. And I'll say C table for uh, appropriate size based on uh, 
number of servings, right? Because sometimes you just, if you're making a single serving, you don't need a whole casserole dish that's 12 by, you know, let's say 12 by 8. Uh, you would need that to feed a family. If we're just making a single serving or two two servings, it's going to be a much smaller dish, right? And so we'll include that in our table at the bottom. So we got casserole dish. What else do we need? Salt. Well, we need a pot to boil the mac the, the, the pasta in. Uh-huh. Uh, large uh, pot. Okay. Salt, pepper, anything else? Okay, sounds good. So we got all of our ingredients. So now I am at point J. So this is where I want to go back, right? Because because step one is complete. Step one is collect the following items. And we listed all of them from A all the way down to I. But I don't want J. Now I want bullet point number two, which is going to be step number two. So I'm going to remember when I hit tab and it moved over, like I, I just did it. So to reverse that and go backwards, we want to do shift, hold down the shift button, and then click on tab. So I'm holding down shift, and I'm going to click tab. It goes back. I'm going to do that one more time. Hold down shift and click on tab. And now I'm at bullet point two. So what is step two? Preheat the oven, right? Eric, somebody has a question. Oh, someone has a question. Go ahead. Willy Fred. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask how you um, get, you know, how you get to the bullet points, but I have seen it now. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. how you align it, you know, sh shifting. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh -huh. you're welcome. Uh, yeah, so just to show you again, right, so we, we would have a J. If I want that J to become step number two, I just hold down shift and hit tab. And it moves it backwards, and it knows now we're on step number two. So step number two would be preheat the oven to what do we cook mac and cheese at? Three seventy five, four hundred. Three fifty, three seventy five. We'll, we'll go three fifty. Why not? All right, preheat the oven to three fifty. Uh, step three. What's step three? I boil the the macaroni. Uh, okay, so uh, I would say fill the large pot with, um, I don't know, two gallons of water, bring to a boil, right? Um, insert the macaroni shells. See the table for the appropriate uh, amount. Because again, depending on how many servings uh, we're going to have in our table, uh, do you want half a cup of macaroni shells, one cup, etc.? Uh, again, I'm going to hit enter here to get down to the next step. Step number five. So we we got the water boiling. We've inserted the macaroni shells. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Add a bit of salt and a bit of oil. Okay. Add salt and oil to yeah. taste. Yeah. We got to go back up here and add oil. We didn't add yes, oil. Because we, here. Yeah. Um, so that they don't, um, gonna... it, they don't club together. Yeah. Exactly. That's important. Nobody likes clumpy mac and cheese. Okay. Add salt and uh, oil to taste. Enter, uh, and then I'm going to say C table uh, for, let's see. Well, I, actually, I guess it would all boil at the same amount of time. So I'll say let boil for how long normally? Six to seven minutes or so? Yeah, about 10 minutes. And continue to stir. Ten. Yes. 10 minutes so while right staring, yeah. So that does it. <laughs> you know, it's stuck to the bottom. <laughs> let, let boil for 10 minutes, stir occasionally. All right? Yes. Okay. So let boil for 10 minutes, stir occasionally. Okay. 
Can you guys still hear me okay? Yes. Great. All right, so let boil for 10 minutes, stir occasionally. Um, once uh, finished, uh, drain the noodles. Okay. Sorry, noodles. Do not rinse. All right, step eight. So we got drained noodles. Um, now, what do we want to do with the noodles? Put the noodles into the casserole dish? Yes. Put the drained noodles into the casserole dish. Again, I'm going to hit enter. All right, so we've got the cooked noodles. They've been drained, not rinsed. We put them back in the casserole dish. What's step nine? Mix the milk, the butter. Add milk. Butter. Butter. I'll say salt, pepper. Yes. Um, stay. Uh, in accordance with below table. And the cheese also. Yeah, oh, and the cheese, gotta have that. We just making noodles with <laughs> milk and butter. I'm putting that <laughs> Add the cheese, the milk, the butter, salt, pepper, in accordance with the below table. Okay. Mm -hmm. Step 10. Uh, mix well. Step 11. What, else, what will we do next? Probably, uh, are we ready to throw it in the oven? But, yeah, the oven is already preheating. Yeah, so the oven's preheated. We got it all mixed up. I think we're ready to put it in the oven. Anybody got any other steps with this? Yes, but uh, you do that. Sometimes you have to break um, like this, like flakes or something and put at the top and then you push into the oven. Ah, right, right, right. The other like where you, where you put the flakes on the top. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because we didn't add that in the list of ingredients, we're not going to do that this time, but I do know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah, where you put like the uh, uh, breadcrumbs on the top. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. A little crispy. Okay. So we got mix well. So I'm going to go ahead and say step 11 is going to be um, insert the casserole dish into the oven. Bake until internal temperature of, I don't know. Uh, 250 maybe, something like that. And once- for, th for 30 minutes or so. Yes. Uh, I'll say C table for um, time. I'm allowed cook yeah something like that because it's gonna be different right again if we're making a single serving that's going to be a lot quicker than if you're making uh, a casserole well, then, with six right yeah. um okay and then uh once uh cooking is complete remove from oven left hand or Five minutes to cool down before enjoying. Exactly. Okay. All right. So we got our steps now. So I'm going to hit enter. It goes to step 14. If I hit enter again, it goes away. So now my list page. is complete. So I'm done with my list. We're on a new page because we got to the bottom of page one. So page one is just the title, it's a list of the ingredients. And it's the steps. So we ran out of space. And now we're on page two. Uh, the other. Okay. So our cursor again is at the top of page two. And this is where we want to insert our table. And our table is going to have information like for one serving, this is butter, or this is how much milk, this is how much cheese, et cetera. So to make a table, again, it's going to insert wherever your cursor is at. So it's important to have your cursor where you want the table inserted. So I've got my cursor here. 
I'm going to go up to insert in the menu up top, click one time. And you see that it has several options here. And we're going to go with insert table. And this is where it's important that you move your mouse directly to the right until you get over here. And then this will do, right? Do we want five rows and five columns? Or do we want five rows and 11 columns? Or do we want, you know, two rows and three columns? So to start off, because I'm not sure right now, you can always add columns and rows if you didn't create enough when you started your table. So I'm just going to go with like a six by four. So a six by four is going to be six columns and then four rows. So to do that, you just go here until you get it to say six by four. Once you are finished selecting the size of the table that you want, you just click left click one time and notice that it inserted the table. So we need to give it some uh, kind of some titles of each one of these columns. So the first column is going to be the serving size. And let's say we're doing, uh, what are the options? Single serving. Uh, well, actually, we'll say one person. Excuse me, where did you go to create the, the table? The next one, we'll do two person. Yeah. Up where here. did you go so to I, create I, the I'll table? I'll do it again, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, again, I have my cursor here. It's important that your cursor is where you want the table to go. And I want to insert up here at the top. And then you have some options on, and there's so many things you can insert, by the way. <laughs> uh, we won't cover them all today. Uh, but right here, you go to table. Okay. And then you just, but you have to, this is important that you follow, your mouse needs to follow all the way to the right of this arrow. And then here's where you select the size of the table that you want. Once you've selected the size, Click one time and it's going to insert a six by four. So six being the six columns across and four rows down. So I'm going to go ahead and insert our titles for each one of these columns. The first one is going to be serving size. And again, you just move your, you can use tab to go to the right. So each time I hit tab, it goes over to the next column. So we're going to have serving size. We're going to have, uh, we'll say the next one will be how much cheese. The next one will be milk. The next one will be, uh, let's see, butter. And the next one will be um, casserole size. And then the next one will be cooking time. So those are our columns. So notice that this one here, it didn't, it doesn't look good. It says casserole and then the E went down. So I'm going to change the font just to make it a little bit smaller to get it to fit. So again, I'm just clicking and holding. So I want to change the font for everything, right? We wouldn't want to change the font for just one. We want it to be consistent. We want all the titles to look the same. So I want to get my cursor over here to the far right. Again, I'm going to click and hold, and I'm going to move my cursor all the way to the left. It selects all of the titles. And then I can just come up here and make them all a little bit smaller until we get a fit that we like. So I went with, uh, we can go with 15, it looks like 14. Yep, no, 15 won't work. So size 14 looks like it's gonna work. So we're good there. Is it going to affect the first page? No. Oh, no. okay, because that's oh, what happens. Right. Sometimes it affects, when I try to do that, it affects the other page, so. Right, so it will only affect what you select. Okay. Right. So if I wanted to change just this, this line, for instance, I select that and I can change just that line. If you want to change the whole page, you need to select the whole page like that. Okay. Right. Yep. So it should only change what you're selecting. Okay. So serving size. Uh, so we got a one person serving. We're going to have a two person serving. Three. And then as I tap over, Notice when I get to the bottom right uh, cell. So this is a cell. A cell is where a row and a column meet at. So this is a cell. When I get to that bottom right cell, if I hit tab, it automatically gives me a new row. 
And then this one's going to be family portion. Four. Again, I don't like that it took up too many lines here, so I'm going to select these. And I'll make these a slightly smaller also, see if we can get a little bit better fit. There we go. Because I want everything to fit nice and snug. So now we have the outline of our chart or uh, table here. We have the headers. And then we have on the left the names of the rows. So let's say for cheese for one person, let's say you did, and I'm just making up stuff here. So um, let's say with two ounces, maybe then four ounces. If you'd have three persons, maybe you do six ounces, and for a family, you do 12 ounces. Uh, milk, let's say you did uh, half a cup, and I'm, again, just making up stuff here. So this could be completely wrong. <laughs> Don't follow this recipe. Uh, and then I'm going to say three cups. That's probably a, too much milk, but that's okay. Uh, half a stick, one stick, 1 1.5 sticks of butter. And then two sticks. Yeah. So butter. Casserole size. Um, okay, so for the single person, we can probably do like a four inch by uh, four inch, something like that. Uh, if we're doing a two person, maybe we do a six inch by six inch. If we're doing a larger one, maybe eight inch by eight inch. And then if we're doing a family size, Probably going to be 12 by 8. Okay. And then cooking time. Uh, let's see. We cut it's going to be in minutes. We can just put minutes up here. So then we don't have to put minutes down here. So for a one person one, let's say it will be a 15 minutes cooking, two person, uh, maybe 20, 25. And then this big one, maybe that's going to take 45 minutes. Okay. We'll just make this one 30. Go with that. Okay, what do you guys think about our table so far? Is it easy to read and find what you're looking for? Is there anything we can do to make it easier to read? Let's put some color on the heading or shade the headings. Thank you, Linda. I was hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's add some color to the headings here. So again, just like we did previously when we changed the size of these headers here. Now we're going to add some color. This can make it a little bit easier to read, okay? I like going personally with like a black and a white. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change the background color for the title here to black. So I'm going to highlight everything again. Uh, if you had your hand on the mouse, this would be your middle finger instead of your pointer finger. So we want to right click. And we want to go to table properties right here. Then we want to go to color right here. And we have some options. I want to change the cell background color. And I'm going to go with black. So I just select it and go with black. Notice that I, my words are also in black, so it's a little bit hard to read. So let's go change our text color now to white. There we go. I kind of like the way that that looks. That looks a little bit easier on the eyes. OK. Give me one second, guys. Let's see. Hmm. All right, everyone. So we've got our titles done now. We're good to go. We've got our table in there. Uh, so this is essentially uh, the main part of the lesson that I wanted to cover. I wanted to demonstrate, and, and I'm going to show you guys some extras here in a second. But this is essentially the main things I wanted to demonstrate, right? We, we added a title. We did some bold. We increased the font. Uh, we changed some font color. 
colors. We inserted a list that had multiple levels, right? We have level one with the numbers one and two, but then under that we have like one A, one B. So we demonstrated that. And then we also, of course, we inserted our table here at the bottom. So now let's have a little fun. Let's first of all, save our document. It has been saving as untitled document, but we want to give it a name. So I'm just going to- Hey, Eric. Uh-huh. Okay, once you've done number one and put the A, B, C, D, how do you get now from back to do from like number two, if you want to break it to A, B, C, D, how do you get back to that? Yes. Thank you for the question. So I'll demonstrate from here. So let's say I went down and I added K, right? But I, but I didn't have any more bullet points under large pot. I want to go back to number two now is on your keyboard, this is a keyboard function that you have to use. You have to hold down shift and, and click tab. So hold down shift and click tab and it's gonna go back. Notice also that it changes all the numbers below it. So- if, Yeah, if, so if, what if you want to put the, the, the sub, the sub uh, whatever, like A, under, B, C, D for number oh, two? Like under, under yes. one, uh, under uh, number two? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, what you would do from number two is if you hit enter, go to number three, right? But we want it to be 2A. So all you have yes. to do is hit tab. Okay, okay. And then you could say, you know, uh, I don't know, set the timer to remind, to remind you whatever you want to say, right? So under okay. any of these bullet points, you can get a A, a B, right? You can, it's so forth. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm hmm. I'm going to go ahead and just delete some of this stuff. Thank you for the question. OK, and so now let's have a little bit of fun with the document now. So we've got our mac and cheese recipe. Uh, I'm going to insert a picture of mac and cheese. So I'm going to go to insert right here. Insert image. And I'm going to do search the web. So you're going to get generic photos from the web. These are photos. They're called stock photos. When someone just takes photos, they sell them to Google or other different services. And then you can use those photos in your own uh, documents or presentations that you're making at home. You could, of course, also, if you had a photo on your computer, you could upload that photo to this document and use the easier one, which is search the web. Over here on the right, it opens up a little uh, place where you can enter what you want to search for. So I'm going to search for Mac and cheese, and then I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to give me various photos. Uh, we don't want the kid Mac and cheese because we're adults and we don't do craft. So let's look for some Southern baked Mac and cheese. Uh, let's see. This looks about right. I'm going to hit Notice that it puts a little check mark, so I clicked it and it put a check mark there, and it says that I currently have one item selected. So then I hit insert, and it's going to insert that photo into my uh, document. Now, notice it's kind of big. If you don't want it that big, uh, you can always click on it. It gives you these buttons in the corners. To resize it, I can simply move my mouse over one of the corners. You see how I get that double arrow? Just click and hold, and you can shrink it. And then we're done. So now we have a, a, a picture of what it's supposed to look like so that when you pass this recipe down to your great-great-grandkids, they know what it's supposed to look like when they're done also. They don't just have a recipe. They have a picture, which is always helpful. So we got a picture now. Uh, and let's also go back. And let's add a. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone have here. a question? No, now. No question? No question now. Okay. I'm listening. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now I'm going to go down here at the bottom of my table and I'm going to add some new lines and I'm going to say uh, if you'd like, please visit my YouTube video uh, on how to make 
mac and cheese at this link. And so now let's go over to YouTube. So let's just say you made a YouTube video on how to make mac and cheese. Yes, it's important. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm just going to go to the YouTube website. And I'm going to type in here, mac and cheese recipe. All right. So we got a couple different ones here. I'm just going to find the one. I'll go with this one right here. Why not? Sorry about that. All right. So I'm here now at this video, and every web page on the internet has an address. The same way your home has an address, every web page on the internet has an address. The address to this mac and cheese video is right here. So all I have to do is highlight that address, the entire thing. Oh, right. address? Yes, this is this is the address to this video on how to make mac and cheese. This is the address right here in the address bar. I'll send to you. Uh, and so, it, are you talking to me? No. Yeah, uh, I ask uh, home address. I'll send to you. Oh no no no! We're we're talking about the address for the web page. Oh the, okay okay, mm -hmm. I understand now. Yes. No problem. Thank you. And <laughs> and so this is the web address. I'll to clarify. This is the web address mm -hmm. for this mac and cheese recipe. It's youtube.com forward slash watch question mark v equals and then these letters. So mm -hmm. I want to capture this entire address because if any time I go to this address, I'm going to get this video on how to make mac and cheese. So once I have it completely selected, again, I'm just gonna select the entire thing. Then I can right click, let's do right click and do copy. It's not gonna look like anything happened when I hit copy, but it, it shot that web page address to our document and now these are now this highlight link so we have link highlighted and then right here it says insert link a link when it says link means a hyperlink a hyperlink is going to be an item that they can click and it will take them to a video so i'm going to i have highlighted link down here and now we want to add the web address to where it's going to take them when they click that link. So I'm just now going to hit Control V. I could also right click and paste. Because remember, we copied the web address. Now we want to paste that web address right here. And then we hit apply. I'm going to actually go ahead and close it out so you guys can see what happens. So notice that link now is blue and it has an underline. That is an indicator that there's a hyperlink there. Good for showing us that. So if I now come here and click on this, it's giving us this YouTube page. And now I can just click and it takes me and it takes me right to the mac and cheese video. Isn't that slick? Are you guys impressed? I am. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just having fun with you guys. So this is this is this is fun stuff, though, right? So we have our mac and cheese recipe. We put a photo there. Um, if you happen to have a video of one that you like, you can add the link right there. Um, and so that's good. And let's go ahead and save the document because, of course, we know that it's always saving because this cloud, this little cloud with the check mark, is telling us that it's saved. But we haven't actually named it. It's still called Untitled Document. So let's click in there. Most of the time, Google Docs will take the first words in your document and make that the title. In this case, that's exactly what it did. And I'm okay with that, so I'm gonna hit okay. And again, notice we our title is Deluxe Mac and Cheese Recipe and Google Docs named it exactly that. So now let's go out of this. So this is saved. Anytime you wanna go back to Google Docs Home, you can click here. And again, if you wanted to reopen that recipe, 
we want we don't want to start a new document now. Now we want to go to recent documents. And it's right here. It's the first document it says it was opened at 652. And you just simply click it one more time. And then you're good to go. Now let's say you have this saved and uh, you have your image, you've got your YouTube link. Uh, we looked at changing fonts and bold and italics. We changed colors. We added some highlight colors. We did a lot of fun stuff today. We added a bulleted list. Um, so now the last thing would always be, of course, is to share it. Let's say you wanted to share it with your family. So then you can just add their emails here. I'm just gonna share this with my wife whose birthday is today, Erica Hunter. And I'm gonna say, hey, honey, here's my famous mac and cheese recipe. And then I'm gonna hit send. And then Erica will get an email with a link. There'll be a link because this document is saved on the cloud. It's not physically on my computer, it's saved to the cloud. So anyone with the link to the document can access it as long as they have the internet. And if I go back to share now, it'll show me that I am the owner of this document, but my wife, Erica, also has access to it. And it's that's our so class. It's so much friendlier than Microsoft. It is, it really is an incredible program. Uh, very intuitive to use. And when I say intuitive, meaning that um, they've tried to make it as easy as possible for someone who's not experienced and has used it a lot to be able to get around it and, and still be able to, to make a nice document. Yeah, it's great. Really it. Yeah, it's really sharp, really sharp. I'm going to stop the recording.